Hi guys, it's Kerry from Ruby Thunder. I'm back. Yippee! I'm sure you're all shouting, oh shit, that one video you made. Oh, we missed you. Where you been? Well, fear not, I'm back. Thank you. It's, it's good to be back. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, I've just been kind of having a few blog problems. Um, got locked out of my WordPress because of some update shit and yeah, I'm not good at that stuff so I've had a couple of friends helping me get back on track I've got a couple of blog posts up if you want to check those out um, you can find me at rubythunder.com um, working obviously um, and I've been super super into my current Skyrim playthrough um, so obviously on the Xbox one you get all the mods and stuff now so I've just been building random shit and doing loads of extra stuff and just generally being a bit of a hermit so that's that's it nothing terribly exciting really but now that the sort of blog stuff's kind of um out of the way um i figured it'd be kind of a good time to make another vlog um did i say vlog twice blog vlog no no, no. anyways that stuff's all sorted um so yeah i thought i'd make another vlog because the last one was so well received like holy shit i can't I can't believe it and I know people say that but like I put off blogging for years vlogging oh my god I'm really struggling today um I put off vlogging for years because I don't know I just I didn't think that I'd be any good at it and oh I don't know you just you find a number of ways to talk yourself out of stuff um so thank you to everyone that indulged me on that and and also like not even the fact that people took the time to watch it which is awesome as well but like some people enjoyed it <laughs> and found it really interesting and agreed with it or it gave them something to think about they hadn't thought before I mean this is all amazing and like you know it was just it, it just made it really cool and oh, I don't know it was just really good so thank you to everyone that took the time out I know it was a long video um and as you can tell already I'm one for rambling and, and blabbling on a bit um so I will sort of try and bear that in mind and try and keep the video a little bit short this time um but yeah so again thank you thank you so much and thank you if you're watching this now for coming back and watching a bit more um I really appreciate it and I hope that we can sort of start a conversation about stuff that'd be really cool so um I suppose I should probably go into the rambling that I have planned to do so yeah let's get into it so today I wanted to talk to you guys about food morality. Um, it's just something that I've been kind of thinking about lately and thought I'd sort of try and verbalise a few thoughts. Um, and so what do I mean when I say food morality? Well, I guess it's the way that we kind of assign food into two basic groups of good and bad. Um, and I mean, I know that some food is more nutritious than others. Like, I'm never going to deny that. But it's that's not really what I mean. I'm, what I mean is, like, the way that people assign themselves a sense of moral superiority over other people for the food choices that they make. And when I decided to make this video, and sort of even before that, I was having conversations about this kind of thing with people. And it's really interesting if you sort of sit down and think, or you just sort of, you really think about how you talk, it, it's really ingrained in our in our consciousness to a point where I don't think we even really realise truly how much we we enforce it. And yeah, it, it was really interesting to sort of take a minute and, and sit down and really think about it and, and how much we perpetuate it. Um, because to me, diet cultures sort of force this idea upon us that some foods are like morally corrupt, like junk food and crap food. And, and I mean, like the most perfect example of this is, um, is like Slimming World and their point system is called SINs. Um, I know they've sort of since changed the I to a Y, um, but I mean, you're not really fooling anyone there, Slimming World, to be fair. I mean, when I was a young teenager doing Slimming World, it wasn't a why then, I don't think. <laughs> um, and yeah, I mean, people are trying to say that it's, it's something else and it's, mm -hmm, yeah, okay, if, if it makes you feel better. But, um, you know, and, and if you see adverts, um, and it's always particularly geared at women or it features women and I'm not saying that this isn't a thing that affects men because I, I know that it does and we're seeing that more now than ever um so my eyes are really watery today <laughs> which is perfect timing um so my makeup's going everywhere but anyways we, yeah we're seeing it more in men anyways um or certainly men are being more open about it than ever before um and having their image affected by by social media and just the world in general but i think there's definitely still more of a focus on women particularly in like advertising and stuff you see these adverts and oh, 
oh, it's the same old shit, isn't it? Like, oh, you know, there's no need to deny yourself any longer because this beloved snack that you love so much but obviously can't eat, um, it now comes in a tasteless fat-free version and it's there's no guilt. There's only like two calories and it's mostly sawdust. So, you know, fucking crack on, guys. Enjoy. Um, always some happy yogurt-eating person. And I think it creates an idea that food, you know, something that we need to survive is something to abstain from. Um, and and it kind of plays this game of restriction and indulgence, like kind of sin and repentance. Um, you know, food is a guilty pleasure. Um, sums this up for me, you know, as someone who just shouldn't, you, you shouldn't eat food, but you just can't resist. Um, you know, it's kind of another nod to like a lack of self-control that people apparently have around food, um, you know, and God forbid, you know, you could get fat, you know, that's something that needs addressing. Um, and let's be real here. I mean, like, that's exactly what it boils down to, isn't it? It's creating a fear and revulsion of, of food um, in a sort of a bid to prevent yourself from getting fat. Um, food morality perpetuates fat phobia because our society already views fat people as gluttonous or overindulgent. Um, and so the opposite of that is to restrict yourself um, because food is something that we all need and we enjoy. So how do you encourage... In, blah, 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 blah. how do you discourage people from from doing that from eating you know and it's it's shaming people out of eating um and and making them fearful and i mean you know one can argue health all one wants but you know health is a complicated issue and it's not an absolute um and also something that you don't owe anyone you are not obligated to be healthy whatever that means you know the number of times I see people like oh you know body positivity is all well and good but you know I think we should be the try and be the best and healthiest version of yourselves says fucking who why do I have to do that it's my body my time my money I'm spending on it how does it fucking bother you you know um it, it's nothing to do with you <laughs> and I don't have to do those things you know I if I'm gonna sit and eat poorly nutritious food all day and not exercise and, and live a sedentary lifestyle I still deserve to be treated with respect and be treated like a human being and be afforded the same opportunities as anybody else you you don't get to treat me any differently and in the same way you don't get to treat me any differently if I was going to the gym and doing yoga and and eating healthy foods and and all that sort of more active lifestyle thing you you don't get to treat me any better because of that um and you know, there's no real definitive way to describe healthy eating anyways, because, you know, some healthy foods are, people are allergic to, or, you know, someone like myself who suffers with digestive issues, you know, a nice, healthy, acidic tomato or fruit, some days just is not going to fucking happen, I'm afraid, unless I want to spend all day in the house. Um, and like another example of, you know, we talk about healthy eating in terms of like, um, lean meats and low-fat dairies you know going back to our sawdust flavored yogurts you know that's one healthy way or apparently healthy way for someone to eat but for someone else eating those things at all is viewed as unhealthy you know the body doesn't need dairy we're not designed to consume dairy um so one can argue that that is very unhealthy way to eat so it kind of proves you know that that there's not one right way to eat and, and assigning food um is more morally superior than other it, it's kind of it's rendered useless because it's it's obviously there's no one right way to eat i mean unless we're talking about uh like ethics of food in regards to animal welfare or um fair pay or ethical productions and stuff that's a, but that's a completely separate issue and not sort of excuse me what i'm really addressing right now um so I think, you know, treating food as anything other than morally neutral um, is dangerous. Um, because for one, it creates a culture of fear and guilt around something that we need, um, ultimately. And, you know, and it opens up the gate for a myriad of issues, like, it, like mental health issues and eating disorders. Um, you know, it enforces unhealthy relationships with food because it creates a system of judgment. Um, and 
it, it sort of creates a social hierarchy and, and suggests that you're lesser if you, if you eat one way to another person. And, you know, the feelings of inadequacy and guilt that come with that, they manifest themselves in really dangerous ways. Um, I've known many, many women in my lifetime. And again, I'm not saying it doesn't happen to men, but just in my experience, it seems to be a lot with women um, who often make a public display of how they eat. Um, and it's often in the form of like encouraging other people to sort of share their sort of already meagre portions of food because they're, they're scared of looking like gluttonous. I mean, I used to do it a lot as a teenager, you know, like, oh, are you going to get something to eat? Because I'm not going to bother if you don't, because you don't want to be the only fatty sat there eating. Or, oh, will you, I'm not, I'm, I don't want all of this. Will you, will you go halves with me? Even though like, you could eat the whole lot and then a bit more. Um, and I think, you know, sort of by offering this public display it's kind of saying you know oh look it's okay I'm um I'm not I'm not greedy and, and you know I, I only want a little bit I'm not I'm not fat uh, you know that kind of thing and I used to sort of I used to loathe these experiences because mostly as the only fat person generally in the room I felt very conspicuous um and yeah it just made me feel really uncomfortable and guilty for eating like it was guilt by proxy. Um, but sort of now, I I just oh, I just find it really sad. And I just want to shake that person by the shoulders and just be like, you know, fucking eat the damn thing. You you deserve it. You deserve to eat. You, you deserve to enjoy the food that you're eating. Um, it's delicious, you know, eat the fucking brownie. It's great. You know, and if you don't want to eat it, that's okay too. Um, you know, wrap it up, save it for later or, you know, share it with someone else or give it to someone else. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't. Just, just get on with, get on with it basically. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a sad experience for everybody involved. Um, and another thing as well, food morality doesn't take into consideration like the issues of class and poverty, um, you know, because many foods that are deemed good or healthy or whatever, um, you know, they're not readily available to a lot of people. Some people live in food deserts um, where sort of fresh and nutritious food isn't readily available. And it's stuff like fast food, canned foods like and um, preserved foods that are sort of more readily available. Um, and more affordable to like impoverished families or you know people on a on a low wage or no wage um and you know sort of fresh vegetables can be really expensive because well for one they expire quicker so you're having to replace them more often whether you eat them or not you know if you're working a couple of jobs and by the time you've got to make your meal you, your food's gone off you're gonna have to buy it anyways or you know, if you've got a, a big family and preparing fresh meals all the time for stuff that you have to replace more often, it gets really expensive. And for a lot of people, that's just that's just not possible. That's not a way for them to be able to live financially. Um, and also with going back to the food desert thing, if if stuff's not more, as readily available when it does become available, there's going to be more of a premium on it as well. Um, so. You know, if you've got a large family or you're you're on a low income or sort of, you know, a combination of all that, it, it's going to be unmanageable. Um, and sort of without going into the politics of how poor people are shamed simply because they're poor, um, they also have the shame of being, um, the shame of eating poorly, like, you know, eating bad foods. And it's like... <laughs> You know, so how dare you be poor almost and now and also how dare you eat shit food because you cannot afford expensive nice food. <laughs> what the fuck is all that about? So, you know, the whole thing's a bit of a fucking mess really, and it just doesn't benefit anybody to be that way. Um so <sighs> yeah, so to bring this video to a bit of a close, because I promised myself I wasn't gonna talk shit forever, um I just want to say that while I'm personally anti-diet, um, sort of for a myriad of reasons, um, not least of all because they don't work. Um, you know, as someone who spent the majority of her young life dieting, it, it doesn't fucking work. You know, uh, I spent 15 years dieting and all I got was this crappy oversized t-shirt and a low sense of worth. <laughs> um, but I would also just implore people to sort of reconsider how they talk about food, how they think about food, um, and, and food in relation to how other people consume it. Um, and the judgments that you pass, like, you know, oh, look at that fat bitch, blah, blah, blah. Which is, you know, that you, you don't know where that person's coming from. You know, they might not have eaten all day. You don't know. And I mean, and even if they've eaten all day, again, that's 
you don't get to make those judgments. You don't get to be mean to people because they're eating food that's nothing to do with you. Um, and, you know, by all means, make decisions for yourselves and what's good for you. But do consider that not everyone is coming from the same advantages that you might be. Um, and people have different upbringings, different ethics, different religions and cultures and, and, and that might not be in a line with yours. Um, you know, as a fat person whose body simply by its size has been up for comment and criticism, it's treated like public property. Um, I spent many, many years fearing eating in public um, because... Well, there's a really, really relatable um, scene in My Mad Fat Diary, and if you haven't watched it, I suggest that you do. It is fantastic, and Sharon Rooney is amazing in it as Ray. Um, um, and it's, um, as it suggests, it's a diary of a, of a fat girl um, and her sort of trials and tribulations navigating through life. But there's really, really, the whole series is super relatable to a point of being uncomfortable, but there's a really, really heartbreaking, relatable scene where Ray's caught eating in secret in the library. And she's discovered by one of the um, sort of mean girlfriends that she makes. Um, and she sort of says, she, she opens up that, you know, if she when she's eating in front of people, she's aware that it doesn't matter what she's eating, people are passing judgment. So if she's eating something like pizza or chocolate or whatever, they're like, oh, look at that fat cow. But then if she's eating a salad, it's like, well, who the fuck is she kidding? So you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Um, but you're judged and treated poorly whatever it is um yeah and that was a lot of how i felt for many many years you know when i learned to drive it was kind of a bit of a reprieve for me because i could i could drive somewhere and eat in private and enjoy things better um which is really sad really sad that i had to do that and i know that people do that and it breaks my heart for those people um but it, it happens that's how people feel um and when you're put under that kind of scrutiny, it fucks with you. It messes with your, your mental health and your well-being and your sense of worth. Um, you know, and imagine having to eat in secret because despite eating being a perfectly normal and essential thing to do, you're made to feel guilty for desiring food. And that's the kind of thing that's that kind of scrutiny is not put, that kind of scrutiny is not put upon thin people either. So there's a huge double standard there as well. So it's not always necessarily about bad foods. It's about fat people eating bad foods that seems to really get people's backs up. You know, like that that meme that was going around of, was it Kate Moss who said, nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. And they were like, mm, I aren't bitch, I think you'll find. And there's like pictures of them all like covered in crisp packets or pizza boxes. And it was always some thin girl. And I mean, and they were funny, like don't get me wrong, I think that shit is, is great. But there's always that thing in the back of my mind that was like, well, if I'd done that, if I'd made that picture, would the response be as positive and well received? I doubt it. I would have six billion doctors telling me, oh, rah, rah, what about your health? Oh, rah, 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 obesity crisis. Oh, rah, 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 my tax dollars. Um, so, yeah, so there's definitely a double standard there as well. Um, so, yeah, just, just something to consider. Just think about how you internalize your feelings about food and where they're coming from and how it's going to affect you as well and not just other people um and i think you'd be surprised that when i sort of stopped myself making those judgments against myself and against other people it's really fucking liberating and you just enjoy stuff food is a very social thing for us you know i'm fortunate enough to be able to eat food for pleasure as well as for sustenance and it's a really social thing um and can be really really enjoyable um, and I think once you're able to tap into that, you, you, you're broadening your horizons already. So it can only be a positive thing. But food is food and you're not a good or a bad person and you've, your worth and your, your, the level of respect is not determined by what you eat. It's determined by your actions and who you are as a person. So eat the fucking brownie, okay? So... Oh, yes, thank you very much for indulging me once again. Just something that's been swilling around in my head for a little while. Um, yeah, and I hope it made sense. I hope it was cool. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm really bad at signing these videos, so that's something else I'm going to have to learn to do, is uh, learn to sign these off. So with that in mind, I'm going to say goodbye. 
before I talk another 10 more minutes thanking everyone and rambling and blah 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 so thank you very much for watching and I will see you again bye